Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, how are you? I am well by the grace of Almighty. By the way, we are in a very critical time, yet we have to continue our all sorts of activities, including our studies as well. Uh, being a student, you certainly have some responsibility to continue your study. And as a teacher, I am too on my responsibility, of course. I am Muhammad Allama Al Said, your teacher, lecturer of English at Dolapur College. Right now, I am going to give you a class upon right forms of verb, what is very uh, pregnant and a very profound topic of English grammar. And right transformation of sentence. Transformation of sentence is uh, such an important topic of English grammar, which is very very profound, very pregnant, and very fast, which makes a man skill uh, to organize and compose uh, complete and correct sentences. That's why, you know, actually, uh, learning English is a deal with sentences. The person who can deal with sentence the person who can uh, uh, work with sentences, who can write sentence, who can speak sentence, who can uh, read sentence and who can understand sentence. This is actually activities of the uh, students and learners today. Uh, and that's, that's why uh, today we have uh, selected our topic upon transformation of sentence. So transformation of sentences is uh, such important topic of sentence as well, which, con which consists of some other very popular and familiar uh, component of English language. So let's uh, start our journey about transformation of sentence. At first, we have to know what is the meaning of transformation of sentence. Transformation uh, meaning actually sense, uh, reform meaning the structure, it's called transformation. So transformation is a sort of sense uh, which normally contains or carries its inner meaning same, but it changes the structure of the sentences. That's why transformation of sentence normally uh, is consists of some very popular topics uh, like descriptive sentence, Structural sentence, comparison of adjective and adverb, and voice. That is active voice and passive voice. Then, right now we have to be introduced with this uh, familiar topics. So by this time, already you have actually uh, learned a lot about these topics. Descriptive sentence. You know, sentence uh, very from the beginning. Uh, we are dealing with sentence and we are uttering the same word sentence. What sentences are? Actually, sentences can be classified in many ways. Here, we are going to uh, differentiate sentences in two ways, like descriptive sentence and structural sentences. Certainly, you have heard the name of 
uh, affirmative sentence, interrogative sentence, imperative sentence, operative sentence, exclamatory sentence and so on. These are exactly descriptive sentence. Descriptive means the sentence what describes or gives some description about something. They are called descriptive sentence. And then structural sentence. The sentence what normally it deals with structure of sentence. These are called structural sentence. And these very structural sentences are three in kinds. Those are simple sentence. complex sentence and compound sentence today our topic is to deal with that sort of very structural sentence you know actually descriptive sentence is important structural sentence is important as well Completion of adjective and adverb, it is also very important part of, important ingredient of uh, transformation of sentence and voice, it is also very familiar and very important our topic of view. So as uh, there are four components here of transformation of sentence, uh, in a single day it is quite impossible for a, a class giver to draw the end of description of all the topics and that's why today we have selected one thing this is a structural sentence today we are going to discuss about a structural sentence and transformation of a structural sentence then certainly we will uh, discuss uh, about the other topics like descriptive sentence comparison of adjective and adverb and voice as well uh, in uh, our next classes then let's continue our class on transformation of sentence of structural transformation of sentence of structural sentences like simple sentence compound sentence and complex sentence then certainly we have to know what's what is simple sentence sentence then let's uh, know about simple sentence Simple sentence is such a sentence which takes only a single subject and a single finite verb. What did you write here? The sentence that takes a single subject and a single verb, a finite verb is called simple sentence. Here, the word finite verb. The very word finite verb is very important here. If a sentence takes some other verb, certainly that verb must not be finite in form. Then it can be a simple one. So we can draw an example here of simple sentence like I want to buy a car I want to 
by a curve. Think here and look here that there are two verbs here. One is want, another is to buy. Car is another object. So, uh, if we write here another subject like he wants to buy a car. Notice here that with the senses of subject, the very word wants, this is finite verb. The actually uh, forms of this verb want senses very promptly. It senses wants from want, but two y remains totally unchanged here. So there, there, there is some difference between these two format of the verb want and y, wants and y, two y. And another thing is that if we omit this very word to buy, then I want a car. This very group of words, what contains a subject and a final verb, it can give a clear meaning that I want a car. Same thing happens here, he wants a car. That means actually he needs a car. But if I want to add this, I want to buy a car, he wants to buy a car, it means it gives another meaning, it is also complete meaning. But if we omit this thing to the senses of their uh, subject, then what remains here, I to a car, he, I to buy a car, he to buy a car, it gives no meaning. So, this very word to buy, it doesn't have any capability to give any sort of meaning. So, the verb what doesn't give any sort of meaning, it can never be identified as finite verb. So, what finite verb is? Finite verb is such verb, what gives a clear meaning in a sentence and what normally senses according to the senses of the structure of the sen uh, subject of the sentence and uh, with the senses of the tense, it is called finite verb. So, finite verb is very important here and to organize or to compose a simple sentence, finite verb is must. So, what is the role here of a uh, non-finite verb? If there is some or more finite verbs in the sentence and if you want to turn into a simple sentence certainly you will have to turn that very finite verb into non-finite one. How uh, a verb can be non-finite? You know actually I uh, discussed it in my uh, previous classes about the structures of non-finite verb and again I am going to give you some uh, information about and uh, clue about the non-finite verb. Look like that non finite verbs actually they are classified in three those are infinitive participle Another word is gerund. You know, infinitive, the structure of infinitive is 2 plus v1, that is base form of the verb, equal to noun. If 2 plus v1 acts like an, a noun, uh, certainly that can be identified as infinite, infinitive. Participle. Participle actually sensed. Uh, changing form of or changed form of a verb what acts like some adjective. These are called participle. Participle can be 
classified in three those are present participle past participle and perfect participle present participle means v1 plus ing past participle mean v1 plus d ed t n en and perfect participle means having plus past participle now come to the point about gerund what is gerund gerund means the structure of gerund is uh, v1 plus ing that, that is actually with the base form of verb ing is added and if it is it works like an noun that is called gerund certainly there is some similarity between gerund and present participle what is the similarity structural similarity in their structure both are same like gerund is v1 plus ing present participle also is v1 plus ing but what is the dissimilarity certainly there is a great dissimilarity between these two component of uh, non finite verb one is noun that is gerund acts as a noun and participle acts as an adjective gerund acts as a noun participle acts as an adjective uh, and that's all they care all about uh, our non finite now we have to discuss about uh, something more what are this we haven't yet discussed about the definition and structure of some other sentences like complex sentence and compound sentence what is complex sentence right now we have to uh, actually discuss about complex sentence we by this time we have already discussed about simple sentence actually we got uh, uh, the structure of simple sentence that is subject plus finite verb complex sentence the sentence what contains a subordinate clause and a principal clause is called complex sentence the sentence that contains a principal clause and a subordinate clause is called complex sentence here we uh, get again a new topic of clause clause it seems a bit new here and it is very important to uh, structureize simple sentence complex sentence and compound sentence let's draw an example of complex sentence like the t 
Shift. A ver. Well, he saw the police. Uh, it seems a great, actually greater sentence. It is greater uh, in its structure, in its space than the structure and space of a simple sentence. Here, we already have noticed that there is two, at least two subject, the thief and he. And two verb as well, they here ran away one and saw is another. And at the middle position of the sentence, there exists an, uh, another word that is when it is called conjunction. So, here we go, by this time we have actually noticed there is two part of the sentence that uh, one is the, the thief ran away and, and another one is when he saw the police. This very two parts. And when these two sorts of parts uh, actually is added in a single sentence is called complex sentence. So what are this part about? These two parts are one is principal clause and another is subordinate clause. What is principal clause? The clause what uh, doesn't depend upon another clause to express its own meaning and which doesn't have any short of conjunction at the beginning of the clause is called principal clause here the thief ran away it's a principal clause we see that there is no conjunction uh, uh, before this clause and another speciality or characteristics of principal clause is that if you separate the clause from the sentence it itself can exist as a sentence and then it will be a simple sentence like here if you pause the sentence here the thief ran away it certainly can actually express its a uh, complete meaning then it is called principal clause so we can say that actually here it is simple sentence equal to subject plus finite verb that is we can mention here like we can actually compare here it with the principal clause notice here that here is one subject here is one finite verb here is one sub subject and one finite verb so this is principal clause and simple sentence also contains a principal clause. So uh, for our actually uh, what can be said argument we can say that principal clause is uh, like and simple sentence is like and principal clause. And uh, students uh, actually today uh, we have discussed a lot about our transformation of sentence. Certainly I told you that. Actually, this is such a topic which cannot draw the end of this topic in our day. So, rest of this uh, discussion about transfer of sentence, we will uh, actually, we are going to keep for the another days. Um, by the grace of Almighty, actually by the help of, of Almighty and keeping hope upon the Almighty, we hope that uh, in next day we can complete our another uh, part of the discussion about transformation of sentence until then you uh, keep well take care of yourself and your dearest and nearest person in your family and beside your family bye